Welcome to the public workshop for the State Road 25 U.S. Highway 441 design project for proposed transportation improvements from State Road 35, also known as Baseline Road, to State Road 200, also known as Southwest 10th Street. The purpose of this workshop is to present the proposed design concepts to the public and to give residents and interested persons an opportunity to review project displays and other information and discuss the project with the project team, ask questions and provide comments. Public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. This public workshop was advertised consistent with all federal and state requirements. Letters were sent to 25 elected officials, 18 government partners, 12 agencies, 16 businesses, and 1,707 property owners or stakeholders. A newspaper ad was published in the Ocala Star Banner on Sunday, November 8, 2018. An ad was also published in the Florida Administrative Register, Volume 44-217, on November 6, 2018. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5 office, or the Tallahassee office. This contact information is also provided on a sign displayed near the sign-in table. The project limits extend approximately 10.6 miles along State Road 25, US 441 from State Road 35, Baseline Road, to State Road 200, Southwest 10th Street, between the cities of Ocala and Bellevue. The existing typical section in the city of Bellevue, from Southeast Hames Road to Southeast 110th Street, consists of one 13-foot travel lane and one 12-foot travel lane in each direction with a 14-foot two-way left turn lane in the center. There are seven-foot parking lanes and a concrete sidewalk with curb and gutter on each side of the road. The proposed typical section between Southeast Hames Road and Southeast 110th Street in the city of Bellevue will be modified to remove on-street parking. It will consist of two travel lanes in each direction, with a two-way left turn lane in the center and a bicycle lane on both sides of the roadway. The existing concrete sidewalk, curb, and gutter will remain. The right-of-way varies with a minimum of 100 feet. The typical section from Southeast 110th Street to Southeast 1st Avenue includes two 11 to 12 foot travel lanes southbound, two 12 foot travel lanes northbound, two foot paved shoulders on the inside, and four foot paved shoulders on the outside, with a grassed median in the center and a new five foot proposed sidewalk on the west side of the roadway. The right of way varies with a minimum of 200 feet. The typical section from Southeast 1st Avenue to State Road 200 or Southwest 10th Street in the city of Ocala includes two 11-foot travel lanes and one 10-and-a-half-foot travel lane in each direction, with an 11-foot two-way left turn lane in the center. The existing concrete sidewalk, curb, and gutter will remain. The right-of-way varies with a minimum of 100 feet. Sidewalks will be reconstructed and gaps will be filled where needed. The project also includes constructing a South 
southbound left turn lane to southeast 100th place via a directional median opening and shifting the existing northbound left turn lane to the south to maintain storage length. The existing median opening just east of southeast 100th place in front of the Moose Lodge will be removed. The project will incorporate the construction of southbound and northbound left turn lanes at southeast 98th lane by changing the existing median opening. Drainage improvements will also be addressed within the grassed median. This is the typical section for this portion of the project, looking northbound. There are two 12-foot travel lanes on the west side with a 4-foot paved shoulder on the outside and 5-foot existing concrete sidewalk with a grassed area between the roadway and the sidewalk. On the east side, there are two 12-foot travel lanes, one 12-foot left turn lane, an 8-foot unpaved shoulder on the inside, and an existing 4-foot paved shoulder on the outside. The existing typical sections on US 441 within the project limits will be modified to extend left and right turn lanes at various locations. Necessary roadside improvements will include signing and pavement marking, sidewalk with a permanent retaining wall within the CSX Railroad right-of-way, and drainage and safety improvements. The project also includes access management or median modifications, the closure of approximately 10 unused driveways, and removal of on-street parking in some areas. Pedestrian features will be updated to meet current FDOT standards by reconstructing the sidewalk in some areas, connecting existing sidewalk by filling in the gaps, and constructing a new six-mile portion of sidewalk from southeast 100th place to 2,000 feet north of southeast 17th Avenue. Roadway lighting at the signalized intersections will also be improved to enhance pedestrian safety. Pedestrian features at intersections will be improved. Mid-block pedestrian crossings are being proposed in some areas and bicycle lanes will be constructed within the urban area wherever possible, within the existing right-of-way or constraining curb lines. Two additional concrete bus pads are being proposed for bus stops. No additional right-of-way is anticipated for this project. Improvements for pedestrians will include reconstructed pedestrian ramps and curb ramps as needed. Crosswalks and stop bars will be provided at intersections. Mid-block pedestrian crossings are being proposed at two locations. Warning surfaces will be installed at some locations to detect pedestrian movements and alert drivers. Detectable warning surfaces will also be installed on the sidewalk ramps at signalized intersections to alert pedestrians with vision disabilities of the crossing. Sidewalk will be reconstructed in areas where it is needed, and new sidewalk will be constructed in areas where there are gaps. The City of Bellevue has requested a pedestrian crosswalk study. The goal of the study is to identify areas where mid-block pedestrian crossings can be constructed to minimize the effects of vehicle travel while improving safety and mobility for all street users. Mid-block crossing locations will be based on the following factors. Engineering judgment, pedestrian crash history, the location of existing pedestrian generators and attractors, existing and potential pedestrian crossing patterns based on observed pedestrian activity, existing worn pathways, future development considerations, and so forth. The proximity to bus stops and alighting areas, 
adjacent signals and existing crosswalks, avoiding or minimizing conflicts with driveways and side street access, and avoiding or minimizing conflicts with existing power poles or other existing utilities. The installation of raised median pedestrian refuge areas are determined to be a context sensitive solution for a transportation facility where the likelihood for a vehicle to encounter a pedestrian crossing the street is higher than average. The installation of traffic calming features, such as raised median pedestrian refuge areas, often involves finding a balance between continuing to provide a safe and efficient transportation network and maintaining a livable and safe environment for pedestrians, bicyclists, and other non-motorist users. Raised median pedestrian refuge areas have the potential to decrease pedestrian fatalities, reduce the complexity of the pedestrian crossing maneuvers, and reduce the operating vehicle speeds on roadways where they are installed. Raised concrete medians help alert motorists to the presence of pedestrians and bicyclists. They enhance safety by providing a safe refuge for pedestrians and bicyclists as they cross the road by allowing pedestrians to cross approaching traffic in one direction at a time. The corridor is an active SunTran bus route. Improvements and maintenance of traffic will be coordinated with them. Bus stop locations are being reviewed and proposed improvements will be affirmed by SunTran prior to constructing additional transit related features. New concrete bus pads will be constructed south of Southwest 13th Street and north of Southwest 12th Street. New drainage structures will be constructed as needed. At some locations, curb inlets will be relocated to accommodate pedestrian ramp reconstruction, and the existing curb inlet tops will be replaced with a manhole top. In some areas, the existing drainage ditch will be piped in order to widen the turn lane for the proposed sidewalks or bicycle lanes. Utility companies have been contacted and the FDOT is coordinating with each company to minimize impacts and avoid construction delays. The project team will coordinate with emergency responders throughout project design and construction to ensure normal operations will not be impacted. Some existing concrete driveways will be reconstructed to remove tripping or vehicle hazards. Ten existing unused concrete driveways will be removed. Per FDOT standards, on-street parking is only permitted where posted speeds are under 35 miles per hour. When automobiles are parked along the side of the road, it minimizes the sight distance for vehicles moving in the travel lanes. Therefore, on-street parking will be removed to allow room for bicycle lanes. Impacted businesses have additional parking for clients or customers in parking areas off of the roadway. Next, we'll discuss access management. Access management is the planning and control of the location, spacing, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, and street connections to a roadway. Access management designates where and how vehicles enter and exit a roadway, helps protect public investment in roadways, and improves public safety by preserving mobility, reducing delays, and minimizing crashes. The illustration shows an accident that could have been prevented by closing the median or providing a barrier where the westbound automobile is trying to turn into or cross the eastbound travel lane. 
Within the project corridor, there are three access management classifications. Class 3 from Southeast 102nd Place to Southeast 10th Avenue. Class 5 from the southern end of the project to Southeast 102nd Place. And Class 6 from Southeast 10th Avenue to the northern end of the project. Changes in access management have specific requirements. Per Florida Statute 335-199, whenever the Department of Transportation proposes any project on the state highway system, which will divide a state highway, erect median barriers modifying currently available vehicle turning movements, or have the effect of closing or modifying an existing access to an abutting property owner, the department shall notify all affected property owners, municipalities, and counties at least 180 days before the design of the project is finalized. The department shall hold at least one public hearing in the jurisdiction where the project is located and receive public input to determine how the project will affect access to businesses and the potential economic impact of the project on the local business community. A public hearing will be held for this project early in 2019. For this project, an access management study will be conducted for the section between Southeast 110th Street and Hames Road. This section of the project is currently an access class 5. The access class will be the same after the proposed improvements are constructed. The first proposed access management change is in front of the racetrack gas station in the city of Bellevue. The FDOT is evaluating this location to determine if a directional median should be constructed to replace the full median opening to improve safety and reduce the potential for conflicts. The proposed access management changes on this segment of the project include constructing a southbound left turn lane to permit access to southeast 100th place via a directional median opening and shifting the existing northbound left turn lane to the south to maintain storage length. The existing median opening just north of Southeast 100th Place in front of the Moose Lodge will be removed. The project also incorporates the construction of southbound and northbound left turn lanes at Southeast 98th Lane, utilizing the existing median opening. Drainage improvements will be addressed within the grassed median. The FDOT is coordinating individually with the property owners that will be directly impacted. You can download a copy of the Florida Department of Transportation's Access Management Brochure for more information. Go to the website at www.dot.state.fl.us and type Access Management Brochure in the search box at the upper right-hand corner of the home page. This project has a 24 to 28 month design schedule. We are currently completing the Phase 2 or 60% plans and will be moving into the Phase 3 plans after this public workshop. The plans will be completed and submitted to the Florida Department of Transportation by spring of 2020, and the project will be let for construction in summer 2020. For more information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website is the FDOT's living platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains the links to easy access to online information, 
and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view the current project schedule details, project contact information, and access project files such as this presentation. Type the project number 4392-38-1 or 4356-86-1 in the search box at the top of the page. Then click on Go. When the new page opens, click on the project file name. We encourage you to share your comments with us. There are many different ways you can submit your comments. Provide your comments by speaking with a member of the project team. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table. Take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. Email your comments to one of the FDOT project managers, Daniel Simpson at daniel.simpson at dot.state.fl.us or Eliode Joseph at eliode.joseph at dot.state.fl.us. Use the Ask a Question button on the CFL Roads website under the project manager's contact information. All comments received by November 23, 2018 will become part of the official public record for this workshop. If you have questions or would like more information, you may contact FDOT Project Manager Daniel Simpson or FDOT Project Manager Elio Joseph by mail, telephone, or email. Again, we would like you to fill out a comment form regarding the design concepts for this project. Please feel free to discuss the project with members of the project team. We will be available until 7.30 p.m. to answer your questions. Thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to attend this public workshop. This presentation will begin again in approximately one minute.